All right, hey guys, what's going on, Slafez here. A bit late on this one, um, kind of procrastinating on it. Um, Bivol versus Arthur, not really much to say about the fight. Bivol dominated the fight. Arthur was, you know, quite negative in the fight. And this fight really sucks the energy out of the card. It really did. Like, we went from having, um, you know, there was Ajit, Domin uh, Ajit Kabiel dominating, Matt Madov, you had Upper Tai taking out Zoro over the round. You had Sanchez taking out Junior Far, and then you had Daniel Dubois, um, you know, taking out Jerome Miller in a pretty good fight. And then you had this. And it just completely drained the energy out of the card. You know what I mean? Just completely drained the energy. You know what I mean? And it's like, I love Bivol as a boxer. I've been rating Bivol as a boxer. You guys can go look at my old videos before the Canelo fight. You know, check the receipts. I've always rated Bivol as a boxer. You know what I mean? Beautiful footwork. You know, beautiful defense he has very tight guarding you know he blocks shots well he's got very good legs like he can you know his foot movement he can get away out of the way of punches great you know what i mean but he's just boring you know what i mean like if you've seen one bibble fight you've seen them all <laughs> you know that you know it's gonna go 12 rounds you know the opponent's not really gonna get hurt you know what i mean well most of them aren't gonna get hurt because this fight in and after they get hurt you know but he just you know, and people say, well, you can't blame Bibble. You've got to blame the opponent um, for being negative. And yeah, Lyndon Arthur was being negative in there. But it's like, not every single opponent Bibble thought was negative. And it still was boring. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, people, like, people say, oh, the opponent's negative. You can't blame the opponent, uh, um, Bibble for, be, you know, it being boring. you got to blame the opponent for not opening up more. But it's like, Bibble throws the same fucking shots every fight. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. He doesn't really throw that many other punches. He doesn't really seem to throw many left hooks or even right hooks or the, not right hook standalone, but, you know, part of a combination because no one really throws right hook standalone, right? You know, you don't see him go to the body. You very rarely see him go to the body. You don't see him do body hooks or body uppercuts or anything. You, know, you, you don't see him throw uppercuts. You get what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't throw that many... He hasn't He hasn't got that much punch variety, you know? But the only reason why he can get away with it is because he's got amazing footwork, he's got good defence, and his timing and his hand speed is is insane. You know what I mean? He can always catch his opponents off guard at the right time, even if he's throwing the same punches all the time, at the same, you know, all the time. You know, even though his punches are predictable in terms of, you know, the variety, he always catches you off rhythm, you know, especially with those quick hands of his. Always catches you off rhythm. That's how he's able to beat these guys. And sometimes might be a bit too good for um good for his own good, but his fights are boring. They really are. They're really boring. And it's just like I don't even I'm not even really sure if I'm really gonna be excited to see a Bivol fight. Because before this fight happened, when I, after the Miller fight, I was like, oh, there's a Bivol fight next. It's like, oh, I don't even know, man. Am I gonna watch this? I did watch it, but I wasn't really paying that much attention. And there wasn't really much to pay attention to up until like the 11th round when Bibble, you know, actually put, you know, a you know, part of a barrage gets off. And by the way, a lot of those barrages that the commentators were hyping up and everything, the crowd going crazy and over, Lyndon Arthur was actually blocking a lot of them. That's the thing. See, when Bibble actually goes for it, his accuracy actually isn't that good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it looks flashy and cool and everything, you know, but he's not really landing much. You know, and when he actually did go to the body against Lyndon Arthur, he actually scored a knockdown. You know, because Lyndon Arthur also got knocked down by a body shot from Anthony Yard, you know, knockout loss. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like he can't go for the finish, even if the opponent's been negative. Because he took down Lyndon Arthur with a body shot. But the problem is Bivol doesn't throw that many body shots. If he was doing that from the fucking start, then maybe he could have got Lyndon Arthur out of there. Like, I'm sorry, but he should not be going the distance with guys like Lyndon Arthur. You get what I'm saying? Like, he's always going the distance. His fights are usually the fucking same. You get what I'm saying? Like, he just, he just, you know, he doesn't have much punch variety to his game. You know, and he's he's always content on coasting. Like, that's another thing. Bivol always stays in first gear. He barely, rarely ever fucking turns it up. Ever. Always staying in first gear. You know, like, he seems content on just coasting to a decision. You know, still stuck in the amateur style, I guess, but it's worked for him. It's worked for him. You know, and I don't really see, you know, many people in the division beating him. I don't see Baturbia beating him, you know. I don't see Baturbia beating him, truth be told. And some people say, well, you criticise, you know, um... <laughs> Sorry, before I even get to that point, it's like, people say, 
Haney is boring. But then act like Bivol's entertaining. You name me one entertaining Bivol fight, I swear to fucking God. Name one entertaining Bivol fight. Because I can't really tell you. I guess the only entertaining bit since one of his fights is the Joe Smith Jr. fight. When he got hurt and then he hurt Joe Smith Jr. in the last round. But other than that, I couldn't really think of anything else. I couldn't really think of anything else. Even the Canelo fight was boring. You know, even that was boring. Like, he just constantly goes a distance. Like, he just doesn't go for it. He just doesn't take extra risks. He just is content. You know, and why that's good for him, he's winning and he's not getting hit. Me, as a boxing fan, you know, just watching it from an entertainment standpoint, is boring. You know, boxing skills-wise, yes, amazing, beautiful. But you can't expect me to get excited watching this shit when I know what's going to happen every time. He's going to throw the one-two over and over and over again and he's going to win the fight and he's not going to try and go for a knockout. Why can I get excited about that? You get what I'm saying? People would say, well, how are you criticizing Bivol for being boring, but then you praise Devin Haney? All right, cool. Devin Haney actually tries to go for a knockout, even though he knows deep down that he cannot fucking punch hard. At least at like lightweight, you know, when he was draining. At 140, he's punching a bit harder now, you know. Like, he was trying to, against Gamboa, he's trying to, you know, go for it. You know, he couldn't do it, but also Gamboa was tying him up. Against Hoya Linares, he took extra risks and tried to go for the knockout and got himself hurt in the process. Against Joe J. Diaz, he was standing right in front of him, trying to get a knockout. Yeah, the George Cambosis fight, the first one, he just played it safe, done the jab and whatnot, because he actually felt, you know, there was a risk of Cambosis catching one of his fast hand encounters. But in the rematch, he done more than just jab. He threw the right hand, and there's around the 10th round where he beat Cambosis to a pulp. And Cambosis said himself, he doesn't even know how he made it out that round. And then against Lomachenko, he took it to him, hit him with body shots, all kinds of shots. You get what I'm saying? And then he gets Regis Progre. He hurt him. He dropped him. Hurt him several times in the fight, but Regis Progre weren't, you know, definitely taken. So Devin Haney actually tries to go for the knockouts. He actually tries to make fights entertaining. I've seen far more entertaining fights from Devin Haney than I have Dimitri Biffle. You get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can get really excited for a Bill fight because... This fight was boring. The, the Ramirez fight was boring. The Canelo fight was even kind of boring, truth be told. But you give it a slide, you kind of let it slide because, you know, it's Canelo. The Uma Sal Salama fight went entertaining. Um, what fight did I have before? The Craig Richards Okay, the Craig Richards fight went too bad. It went too bad, truth be told. Even though it was kind of the same shit over and over and over again. But I guess Richards, you know, I guess giving Bivol his toughest fight, that's what made it, you know, um, entertaining. Um... The Lennon Castillo fight was awful. That shit was terrible. Like, he just coasted. Seriously, against Lennon Castillo. And I know Lennon Castillo was, you know, looking to survive. But come on, man. Come on. He didn't even try and push it. He didn't even try and get him out of his show. Like, anyway, he did with Paul Butler. Like, anyway, was facing against a negative opponent. And he did everything he could to get Paul Butler out of his show before eventually taking him out. Why can't Bivol do that? I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. You know, I don't understand, man. I just, I don't know. I can't, I don't think I can really get excited to watch a Bivol fight. You know, great boxer, but he's just not, I don't know, the entertainment aspect is just not there. He's not as bad as Lawrence Coley, don't get me wrong. I mean, fucking hell, don't even get me started. Or Shakur's last fight. But even with Shakur, I've seen more entertaining fights from Shakur than I have with Bivol. I'm just being honest. I know, I know it's a very unpopular opinion. I don't know if people are going to get their fucking feelings hurt. But I've seen more entertaining fights from Shakur than his last fight. You know what I mean? Like, the Yush uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, was it Yoshino? You know, Shakur went for it. Took him out. You know? Um, the Concession fight, okay, truth be told, that wasn't that interesting. But Shakur was coming at him and was hitting all kinds of shots. You just couldn't take him out. Against Oscar Valdez, he was taking it to him. You get what I'm saying? You know, Jamel Heron, that was kind of entertaining. Beat him up, stopped him. You know, I've seen far more entertaining Shakur fights than I've seen Bivol. And Shakur's scored more knockouts in recent years than Bivol has. And Shakur's a fucking lightweight. And Bivol's a light heavyweight. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> like, oh, oh man. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. You know, what I'm going to say is this, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, good boxer, but just, I don't know. I'm not really sure if I can really watch Bivol like that anymore, truth be told, because... 
you've seen one fight, you've seen them all, you know, you're just basically watching the same movie over and over again, just with a different cover, you know, so that's all I've got to say. It's the first, I'm out, peace.